My family doctor came in with the lead doctor at St. Mary's and, and he said, Eric, I believe that this hospital is overwhelmed with all the different things that are hitting now and they don't have the resources here, we believe, to effectively treat you. The last week of August, so at two or three in the morning, I drove myself to St. Mary's in Saginaw. They found my pulse was climbing uh, unacceptably high and found that I had small blood clots in my lungs. The next step was they gave me uh, massive amounts of blood thinners. In doing that, it aggravated a condition I wasn't aware I had. So I actually had in massive internal bleeding. While that was going on, um, there was we started noticing discoloration on one of my toes on my right foot. They had no choice but to amputate that or it could get worse. They did have success finding a bed at Henry Ford Hospital. So I went down to Henry Ford. Um, the very first thing they, di they did, and I was actually awake, under th they gave me a lot of numbing agents, but I, um, I was basically being pushed towards a machine that was going to shave off two of my toes. And then after that, when I was in recovery, they estimate that I lost about half of my blood at that point. The next day, while they were performing the colonoscopy, there was massive amounts of blood pulsating out. So every time my heart beat, there was a massive amount of blood spraying into my colon. And he looked me in the eye the next morning, he said, Eric, he said, I got that. I clamped it, and I know I got it. From that point, all my vital signs turned around and went positive. So I was really pumped up. Until about an hour later, I had a new group of doctors that I hadn't recognized. They said, Eric, we, we have some we regret to tell you that we believe your kidney has re uh, received irreversible damage. According to the nurses that worked with me that night, and God bless them, they were so good, and they told me I had the most positive attitude for someone in that condition they'd ever seen. They admitted to me the next day, they were surprised I survived that. They said that most people are, are gone or when they lose half their blood in that type of situation. So they did a, a lot of tests on me over the next day or two, and they said, miraculously, you bounce back from this somehow. It, just, it was just one thing after the other. And a lot of people are like, well, how can you be positive? I said, well, God's saved me. I'm alive. I give credit to the Holy Spirit because I on my own could not have been upbeat. There's no way. I was not able to take a step until the last week of November. So the, the last Friday of November was my first step. Because there were times where I'd think about, look at all I'm going through. How can I stay? How can I smile? How can I do it? It's been a long ordeal, obviously. I, I'm, real, I'm so thankful for all the prayers from the congregation of St. Lawrence and for Pastor Adams and Vicar Polzine coming down to see me at Henry Ford in Detroit. That, that really um, cheered me up a lot. Just to see somebody come that far to visit me made a big difference. So one of the, uh, the assurances I had is that Jesus had been through much worse suffering than I was going through. I mean, I had the benefit of pain medications and people uh, kind of pat me on the back, uh, whereas Jesus was in a situation much worse. <laughs> so, and knowing that Jesus walked, was here with us, walked the planet, put his hands on people and healed people with unique challenges and diseases, it was definitely, uh, it, it reinforced my faith even more, knowing that he had experienced at least what I'd experienced and much worse, and also knew how to fix me. And that should give us all confidence that no matter what our challenges, Jesus is going to deliver us. My name is Eric Seri, and this is my Christmas present.